teachers, students and guests, those, as well as those of us joining via live stream this morning, welcome to the 42nd annual Denison College Kelso High Campus Presentation Assembly. We are very fortunate to have professional photographer Mr Peter Yandel with us this morning to take photos that will be made available after today's assembly. As we start today's proceedings, I ask you to please join me in standing to welcome the special guests and please remain standing for the acknowledgement of country and national anthem. Hello. Oh, we're here. Hello, guys. <clears throat> Gambana, welcome. Yiru Dimurang, g'day. Yama Dimurang, here well. My name is Jaden Thornbury, and I'm here today to acknowledge the Rajuri people who are the traditional custodians of this land and whose land we are gathered on here today. People of the three rivers, the Wombu, Macquarie, Galaria Lachlan, and the Murrumbidgee, Murrumbidgee. I'd also like to pay respect to our special guests and hope you enjoy this assembly. Mandangu, thank you. Please be seated. Some female students from the Aboriginal Representative Council will now perform the clearing dance, followed by the boys performing the welcome dance. Thank you. 
Jare go garam bana do wagana. Dera jare go aine. Nor mango go amenado. Dera jare go aine. Nor mango go amenado. Nangin ga galengo biling galengo. Wayando galengo biling galengo. Nangin ga garai nangin wal gara. Galingo, billing galingo, Wayando galingo, billing galingo, Nanganga garae, Nangan walgara. Galingo, billing galingo, Wayando galingo, billing galingo, Nanganga garae, Nangan walgara. I Agana, a chup, Agana, a chup, Agana, a chup, Hyogana, a chup. Thank you to those students for an amazing performance. I would now ask Mr. Sloan to the stage for the principal's address. Is that better? Sorry. Did you catch any of that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I extend a warm welcome to our parents, uh, family and friends who are joining us virtually today. We would rather have you here in person, but unfortunately we can't. Uh, but thank you for tuning in. I hope you feel connected to the ceremony from wherever you are. I'd like to welcome all our special guests who've joined us today. Mr. Paul Tool, the Honourable Paul Tool, Member for Bathurst, uh, educa Director of Educational Leadership, College Principal Colleagues, Mr. Ken Barwick and Ms. Christy Anderson, um, Ms. Naya uh, Barnia from the Country Women's Association, former Kelso High School student Cameron Corb Wells, his mother Chris and wife Teresa, parent representatives Ms. Rose Bracken, Ms. Rebecca Howe, Ms. Penny Butler. Lance Corporal William Maloney, representing the ADF. Mr. Hans Strove. Mr. Blake Lawson. Campus head teachers, Sharon Mendez, Ashley Hards, Nathan Kenny. Matthew Bignall, former student of Kelso High Campus. And campus deputy principal, Ms. Narelle Small, Ms. Cara Logan, and Ms. Liz Goldsby. I think I've covered everyone. Hope I haven't forgotten anyone off that list. Thanks to all of you for being here today. I understand it's a very busy time of year uh, and we very, very much appreciate your, your presence and your contribution today. Before we go too much further, I'd like to thank the, the organising committee who've done an amazing amount of work to pull today together in a relatively short period of time. It wasn't that long ago we weren't even sure whether we were going to be able to have a presentation event. So thank you in particular to Jude Murphy, also Narell Small, um, Laura Locke and Donna Seaman, who've done an enormous amount of work today. 
Well, we've nearly made it through this year, this very strange year, where the word unprecedented became one of our, the most used words in our vernacular, where our world was turned on its head, where we had to rethink, reimagine and relearn, where we were unable to do a lot of what we normally do in our day-to-day lives. Though it's been a difficult and inconvenient year, we should be thankful that we live in a country where the health and the well-being and safety of our people is a priority of our government, our politicians, our leaders, and indeed our public, because it has been a difficult year. Not so much in, in not as bad in Bathurst as places like Victoria, where my sister lives and was in lockdown at home for several months, basically unable to leave her immediate neighbourhood. But I think that now, because of some of those measures, we are in good shape heading into the new year. In spite of the challenges that we've faced here at Kelso High Campus, things have kept moving. We've kept moving. We've kept our focus on teaching, on learning and on growing together. We found new ways of doing things. We found new ways of connecting with each other. We met Gavin and Stacey, Teddy and Harper, Magnus, Calypso Tilly and many others in a modified format. We're hopeful and quietly confident that next year will resume in a more normal year, as a more normal year. All things started to open up towards the end of the year and we could participate in more of our typical experiential learning in subjects like commerce, robotics, agriculture, music, drama, dance and our other KLA areas. Our students were able to engage in community partnerships with organisations like the PCYC and TAFE. Year 7 were almost in Year 8 when they had their camp, but finally and luckily it did go ahead. I genuinely believe that we should be proud of what we've achieved this year and we should celebrate what we've achieved this year because it has been difficult. We have had challenges and we've done well. I'm proud. I'm proud that this campus is a great place filled with great people, a high quality teaching and learning environment where people are supported, they are respected and they are given every opportunity to succeed. I'm proud of how resilient our people have been to face the challenge they have and be able to get on with it. I'm proud that we're improving every year. Our HSC results, our reading, our numeracy, our behaviour, our culture is all improving. In some cases that improvement is quite staggering. I wish to pay tribute to the staff. We have an incredible teaching staff and non-teaching staff, professional, kind, caring and committed. They are the key to what we do here and to be able to adjust so quickly this year, basically in a weekend, to go from face-to-face -face learning to online learning and do it well is an absolute credit to their professionalism and commitment. The leadership team within the campus and across the college was also crucial to a successful year, including the collaboration and sharing between Bathurst High and Kelso High Campus. I'm proud that we're part of Denison College and I value the links we have with Bathurst High Campus and Denison College as an entity. The college provides opportunities. It, value, it adds value to Kelso High students. It saves time and resources and gives choices. For example, next year, our year nine students will be able to access shared courses at Bathurst High in subjects like marine studies and aquaculture and Aboriginal studies. And I think the closer we work together, the better it is for our students. I thank my principal colleagues um, for their continued support of Kelso High Campus. We can also be very proud of what you, our students, have achieved, notably those that you are here today to accept awards for what you've accomplished. You're our shining light. You're the reason that we come to work. You're the ones that we want to acknowledge today and we want to extend that, that congratulations and thank you for, for your contribution to Kelso High this year. There have been some highlights. We, there was a lot we couldn't do, but I'm just going to name a couple of highlights. Outstanding individual performances. For example, just as one example, National Geography competition, Ben Halverson, Chloe Stapleton and Draven Cottier. High distinctions. 
Michaela Dungmini, who won the who was the national winner of a brilliant business kids entrepreneur program where she made a pitch and won the national competition. We had Emily Butler, who, made, who was a finalist in a national song competition, and Ben Kamenzoli produced a major work in industrial tech metal that was as good as anything that you would purchase if you were buying something produced professionally, and he had a, a lineup of people wanting to employ him after that. I'm proud of how our Aboriginal students stand up and celebrate cultural pride. We've seen a snapshot of that this morning. I'm proud of our student leaders, our sports captains, our ARC, our SRC, our year 12 leadership team. They've got new ideas, they want to do well, they're proud and they're connected. I'm, produced, I'm proud of the work that is produced every day, including student-led programs like the cafe, cafe. And probably one of my proudest moments of the year was last week when I sat and had a conversation with Himoy as he sat in an armchair on his own, holding himself up. And people who know Himoy will know exactly how significant that is. Then I stayed there a bit longer and watched him lift himself out of his chair into his walking frame, stand and hold his weight for a number of minutes, go down, do it again. Himoy has a goal that he's going to stand, he's going to walk and he's going to move out of home into assisted living. So that's his goal and it's driving him that, that's about as good as it gets, I think, in my position. So be proud of being at Kelso High, I guess, is my message because this is a special place and you are, as I said, the reason we come to work. So we have a little over a week left until we enjoy a well-earned rest. All the best to Mark Harlow and Liz Goldsby, who are taking some leave in 2021. Mark will be teaching in the Shoalhaven, near where he grew up, whilst Liz will be doing some further study next year. Over the next week, we will farewell some of our other staff who are leaving as well, and taking up some opportunities next year. We have Miss Adrian Bettis, our science head teacher, Mel McFarland, our relieving wellbeing head teacher, Courtney Bender in HS HSIE, Sarah Thomas, who left us earlier in the year, and Anita Nicole, who's been on leave for a while but will also, uh, has also officially left. Thank you to these amazing people for their contribution to Kelso High. Best wishes for the future. We will miss you. And there is one more person who uh, I would like to thank, um, and that is our admin manager, Ms. Um, Helen, Mrs. Helen Burgess who's not here at the moment, but I may see if I can get her to come over at the end of the assembly to accept a gift on our behalf. And perhaps when, when we do that, I might read out what I've, what I've got um, here. So congratulations to all award winners today. Hold your heads high, be proud of your efforts. Uh, best wishes to everyone for a safe, happy, restful Christmas break. Thank you, Mr Sloan. We now move to acknowledge the academic achievement of each year group. We celebrated the year, co year 12 cohort at a separate presentation ceremony at the end of term three. We would like to welcome Ms Norelle Small, Deputy Principal, to celebrate the achievements of the year 11 and present them with their awards. We acknowledge and value the hard work and effort that students have invested in 2020, and it is a great pleasure that we celebrate this today. I will still announce the award recipients that were unable to attend this morning, Please hold your applause until the end of each year group, and also a reminder that we are still operating under the constraints of COVID-19, so consequently, there'll be no handshaking or fist bumping at today's assembly. The following students have gained first place in their year 11 course. Jack Lamberton for Agriculture and Business Studies. Katie Henderson for Biology, English Advanced, English Extension 1. Katie has also received an Academic Excellence Award for Software Design and Development. Jeremy Igleston for Chemistry, Mathematics, Mathematics Extension 1 and Physics. Crystal Clower, Family and Community Studies. Olivia Turnbull for Dance. Madison Sufong for English Standard. 
Caleb Gibbons for English Studies, Emily Curran for Exploring Early Childhood, Sebastian Honeyman for Industrial Technology Medal, Ellie Rudd, PDHPE, Tyler Pears, Sports Lifestyle and Recreation, Isabella Bracken, Visual Arts, Dylan Patching, Mathematics Standard Course 2, Justin Stevenson, Mathematics Standard Course 2, Liam Kimball, Primary Industries, and Seth Toon, Industrial Technology. That concludes the Year 11 Awards. Please join me in congratulating these students for their achievements. Thank you, Ms Small. Ms Cara Logan, Deputy Principal, will now present the First in Place Academic Awards to the students in Year 10 and Year 9. The following students received first place in the Year 10 course. Hallie Turner for Agriculture and Child Studies. Layla Wergamuth for Commerce. Isabella McBride for Dance. Thomas Henderson for English, Geography, Information Software and Technology, Japanese, Science, Mathematics 105.3, Visual Arts and History. <laughs> Matilda Young for Food Technology. <laughs> Harrison Ford for Graphics Technology. Jacob Cutler for Industrial Technology, Building and Construction. Daniel Martin, Industrial Technology Medal. Thomas Judge, Industrial Technology Timber. Riley Muggleton, Mathematics 5.1 and Drama. Joshua Muggleton for Music. Amy Parker, PDHPE. Chelsea Westman for Photography. Michaela Dungmanee for Physical Activity and Sports Studies. Thomas Smith, Industrial Technology Engineering. And Caitlin Morris for Circus Studies. That concludes the Year 10 Awards. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding students. <laughs> students in Year 9 who have received first in place academic awards in their subjects are Kai McManus, Agriculture, Industrial Technology Medal. Lily Cutler, Child Studies. Chloe Stapleton, Commerce, English, History, PDHPE and Photography. Bridget Muldoon for dance. Flynn Taylor, food technology, physical activity and sports studies. Lachlan Jennings, information technology. Maxine McGrath, Japanese and visual arts. Dylan Prudham for mathematics 5.1. Vulcan Gun does Science, iSTEM and Mathematics 5.3. Jasmine Taylor-Smith, Textiles Technology. Jacob Jarvinian, Graphics Technology. Vesna Saban for Drama. Tegan Sharwood for Music. Storm Clower for Industrial Technology Medal. Anthony Allen, Industrial Technology Medal. And Esther Wainwright for History Elective. That concludes the year at nine and 10 awards for 2020. Please join me in celebrating their achievements. Ms. Elizabeth Goldsby, Deputy Principal, will now present the Outstanding Academic Awards for students in Year 7 and 8.
Students in Year 8 who have received outstanding academic awards in their subjects are Bella Waldron for Geography, Taylor Stapleton for Japanese, Emily Butler for Music, Luke Smith for PDHPE, Pepper Jakes for Science, Isabella West for Spanish. Becky Parrish, Visual Arts, Mathematics. And Caitlin Cooper for English. That concludes the Year 8 Awards. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding students. Students in Year 7 who have received outstanding academic awards in their subjects are Sophie Lindsay for English, History, Information Technology, Science and Art. Madison Honeyman for Geography. Taryn Cooper for Mathematics. Leah Bell for Music. Shelley Keith for PDHPE. Noah Sowertons for Technology Mandatory. Draven Kotia for Aurora College Subjects, English, Mathematics and Science. Draven Kotia has also been awarded the Stellar Award and the Galaxy Award in recognition of his outstanding commitment to the academic excellence at Aurora College. And that concludes the Year 7 Awards for 2020. Please join me again. Thank you, Miss Goldsby. We are now excited to introduce a musical performance from the Kelso High Year 7 rock band. They will be performing Chasing Cars. Thank you. 
Thank you to the Kelso High Rock Band for that performance. Best for the future. We now move to the, present the special awards and I would like to ask Miss Christy Anderson, Denison College Principal, to the stage to present the next awards. The prizes for academic excellence are awarded to the highest ranking students in achievement for each year group. Top students for Year 7 also received the prestigious Reuben F. Scarf Award. This year's recipients are, for Year 7, Sophie Lindsay. For Year 8, Becky Parrish. For Year 9, Chloe Stapleton. For Year 10, Thomas Henderson. And for Year 11, Jeremy Eagleston. Well done and congratulations. Please join me in celebrating these achievements. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. I would now like to welcome parent representative, Ms. Penny Butler, to the stage to present the Commitment to Studies Awards. The Commitment to Studies prizes are awarded to students based on their overall effort and application across all subjects over the whole school year. The award goes to the following recipients. Year seven, Madison Honeyman. Year eight, Kayla Clayhans. Year nine, Anthony Turner. Year 10, Hallie Turner, and Year 11, Katie Henderson. Please again congratulate these aspiring students. Thank you. I would now like to call upon parent representative Miss Rose Bracken to present the next awards. These awards are for stage four students who have shown the most improvement in literacy and numeracy. The most improved students in literacy are Adrian Hasselhoff and Hugh Thomas. The most improved students in numeracy are Ali Evans and Caleb Cashman. Please join me in celebrating these students. Thank you, Ms. Bracken. I would now like to call Ms. Sharon Mendez, head teacher at HSIE, to the stage to present the next award. Each year, a student in Year 10 is selected to achieve this award. 
The student must display a genuine interest in HSIE, achieve excellent results in both history and geography, and be undertaking a pattern of study in year 11 that includes a HSIE subject. In addition to the award, the student will receive a book donated by the Honourable Andrew G, MP, Federal Member for Calair, on behalf of the Australian Parliament. This year, the award goes to Caitlin Morris. Congratulations, Caitlin. Thank you, Ms Mendez. I would now like to welcome our principal, Mr Sloan, and Aboriginal Education Officer, Mr Blake Lawson, to present the Principal's Award of Encouragement for Aboriginal students. Kelso High Campus aims to develop strong and effective school leadership as well as positive school culture that encourages care, safety and positive sense of Indigenous student identity. The Principal's Award for Encouragement for an Aboriginal student is awarded to the following students from each year group. In Year 7, Kalinda Pitt, Madison Honeyman and Torda Lovett. In Year 8, Lachlan Vallis and Hannah Lee Williams. Year 9, Georgia Milligan and Sarah Hodges. Year 10, Malika Hines, Debbie Hodges and Dulcie Lord. Year 11, Tara Trindle, Sebastian Honeyman and Jaden Thornbury. Thank you, Mr Sloan and Mr Lawson. Congratulations to these students who received awards. I would now like to invite Mr Ken Barwick, Principal of Bathurst High Campus, to the stage to present the following sports awards. The Kelso High Senior Sportsman of the Year is Lachlan Howard. The Kelso High Junior Sportsman of the Year is Hayden Edwards. The Kelso High Junior Sportswoman of the Year is Talia Rumming. Congratulations and well done to these students who have been positive role models on and off the sports field. And thank you, Mr Barwick. I now call on Ms Beck Howe, parent representative, to present the following music awards. The Kelso High Campus Most Improved Musician of the Year Award goes to a student who shows enthusiasm, excels in class and is committed to the band. This year it goes to Lachlan Fishlock. The Kelso High Campus Junior Musician of the Year Award goes to a student who's committed both her time to class and extracurricular productions, and this year the award goes to Emily Butler. Thank you, Ms. Howe. Thank you. I now invite Lance Corporal William Maloney to present the next awards on behalf of the Australian Defence Force. The ADF Long Tan Youth Leadership and Teamwork 
Teamwork Award started in 2006 to recognise and celebrate students who demonstrate qualities such as leadership, responsibility, teamwork and integrity, to name a few. At the same time, they recognise those who display strong values such as doing one's best, respect for others and mateship. Young people like yourselves are the future custodians of these values and through the Long Tan Youth Teamwork Awards, the ADF hopes to highlight and the achievements of today's youth who will become tomorrow's leaders. So the ADF wishes to recognise and reward students who contribute to their fellow students and the broader community, as well as a willingness to serve with both their school and broader local communities. I congratulate the nominees for this award. All were worthy and is a very difficult decision to make. The Australian Defence Force Long Tan Youth Leadership and Teamwork Award for this year goes to Michaela Dungmaney. The following award is the ADF Future Innov Innovators Award. This year, the award goes to a student who demonstrates innovation and motivation in science, technology, engineering and mathematics. This year, the award goes to Thomas Henderson. Thank you, Lance Corporal William Maloney. I would now like to ask Mr Paul Toole, State Member of Bathurst, to the stage to present the next awards. The recipients of the Citizenship Awards have been displayed qualities of responsibility, consideration to others and willingness to help and represent our school in a variety of ways both within and beyond the school community. This year the awards are presented to the following recipients, Year 8, Becky Parrish. Year 9, Maxine McGrath and Blake Hadley. In Year 11, Tatiana Bosma. The SRC Student of the Year Award is presented to a student who has demonstrated commitment and enthusiasm when representing their year group, school and student representative council. This award goes to Jared Bignall. Thank you Mr Toole and congratulations to those students. I now invite the Country Women's Association representative, Ms. Mina, Nina sorry, Barna, to present the CWA award. This award goes to a young lady who strives to achieve her best in all of her endeavours and is a positive role model to her peers. This year the recipient is Katie Henderson. Thank you, Ms. Banner. I would now like to ask Ms. Cara Logan back to the stage to present the next award on behalf of the District Masonic Club. The District Masonic Award for Encouragement is presented to a Year 11 student who displays consistent application in all areas of their school life. This year, the award recipient is Jeremy Ibleston. Thank you, Ms. Logan, and congratulations. I would now like to invite Ms. Elizabeth Goldsby to the stage to present the following two awards. The first award is a school-based award, the Career and Life Matters Award. This year, the award goes to Olivia Jordan.
The second award is the Peter Canham Memorial Shield. Peter Canham undertook her secondary education at Kelso High Campus until March 1995, when she sadly passed away at the age of 14. The Petra Canham Memorial Shield is awarded to a junior student who has excelled in the, Jap the study of the Japanese language. This year's recipient is Kayla Clanhans. Thank you, Ms. Goldsby. I would like to call on Mr. Sloan to present the following Caltech's All-Rounder Awards. <clears throat> this award acknowledges the outstanding contribution the following student has made to the school and the wider community, recognising their leadership qualities and commitment across a wide range of activities. The Caltech's All-Rounder Junior Award goes to Jared Bignall. Caltex All Round Our Senior Award goes to Bailey Honeyman. Thank you, Mr. Sloan, and congratulations. I would now like to invite Ms Penny Butler, parent representative, to present the PBL School Engagement Awards. This year, the Positive Behaviour for Learning team would like to acknowledge two students from each year who have consistently met the expectations of Kelso High with pride and engaged in all aspects of their school. The students have been recognised for their outstanding attendance, uniform, task submission and positive behaviour. The winners of the PBL School Engagement Awards are, for Year 7, Hugh Thomas and Gabrielle Davis. For Year 8, Luke Smith and Becky Parrish. Year 9, Flynn Taylor and Tegan Sharwood. Year 10, Thomas Smith and Layla Wergamuth. Year 11, Liam Kimball and Sophie Williams. Thank you, Ms. Butler, and congratulations, students, for your consistent positive approach to school life. I would now like to call Mr. Nathan Kenny to present the Hub Encouragement Awards. The following awards are for students who consistently applied themselves to all areas of their schooling, and the Hub Encouragement Award for each year group goes to Year 7, Brody Butler, Ash Windus, and Jack Holmes. Year 8, Estelle Gooley and Marley Foster. Year 9, Ben Rayner and Ray Palmer Tisdell. Year 10, Mackenzie Chatfield, Riley Muggleton and Debbie Hodges. Year 11, Brody Cooper and Bailey Fraser.
Congratulations and thank you, Mr. Kenny. Our college principal, Ms. Christy Anderson, will now give the college principal's address. I feel very short after Mr. Sloan. Thank you so much for having me as a guest at your day of recognition and celebration. Today's assembly has really confirmed for me my first impressions of Kelso High Campus. This is a place where proud people work together to achieve really important things in a number of amazing fields. What you students have shown up to yourselves and to all of us is that you know how to grab hold of the opportunities that your school presents you with and to make the absolute most of them. You have been curious. You have used your energy to focus on what you want and you have reached the high expectations that you have been unafraid to hold for yourselves. Take a moment to reflect on what it means for your school and all of the special guests to give up their time today to celebrate you. Reset the bar for next year and be confident in the knowledge that you have exactly what it takes to thrive in any circumstances life throws at you. I look forward to getting to know all of you extremely well as I spend more time here and really become part of the Kelso High Campus family that you truly seem to be. Congratulations. I have long known as an educator that teenagers are the most impressive people on the planet and you have proven that again today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Anderson. I would like to invite Mr Hans Strove to the stage to present this year's Decade Award. I feel so tall after speaking after Miss Anderson. <laughs> Couldn't resist it. It is a shame that we don't have um, all the parents here tonight, uh, today, but really, um, what we're going to talk about in the message is for the students here to think about. So, This is now the 24th year of the Kelso High Decade Award. It recognises a student who has completed their secondary education at Kelso High School more than 10 years ago and has gone on to achieve outstanding success or have excelled in their chosen field. This year's recipient is Cameron Corb Wells. My online stalking discovered that Cameron wasn't born in Australia, he was born in 1985 in France, hence the middle name Serge. His educational journey began with his graduation from the Three Bears Kindergarten, receiving his preschool diploma in 1990. Not everything was a breeze though. I note here that Cameron may still need to master the back float. His time at Kelso Public School was highlighted by six years of honour achievement. Even back in primary school, Cameron was already saying that he wanted to be a doctor and find a cure for cancer. All good preparation for starting Year 7 at Kelso High School in 1998. Cameron's biggest challenge in high school was getting his mother, Chris, to believe that the uniform everyone else was wearing was a white polo shirt and shorts and not the long-sleeved green shirt and long pants combination that she'd sent him dressed in. Apparently, it took six months. Cameron loved the challenge of a competition. As you can see here, he had some success. I personally remember, Cameron, how pleased you were in Year 12 when you finally got that distinction in mathematics competition. You can also see the determined effort he must have made after receiving just a participation in economics in Year 11. Cameron was never a shy one in front of the camera. And still some more from the archives on the next slide. And then there's the school, school's Panorama magazine, which was also a cam fest. 
It's a little known fact that um, Cameron saved my teaching career. After uh, I lost all my notes in the 2005 fire, Cameron's mum, Chris, contacted me about whether I could use his extension two notes from our time together. They have been in regular use until the day I retired, especially his handwritten solutions to the exercises. They were just so good. As I have noted on this slide, Cameron was often better at explaining things than I was. As far as ambitions, at the end of year 12, Cameron can tick off one. Next slide, please. Cameron can tick off one, but the Nobel Prize still has to be achieved. It wouldn't be a decade award presentation without the traditional year 12 grad ball photo. You might remember that Cameron's ambition was to do medicine at uni. He didn't just come up with this at the end of year 12. It was something that he had wanted to do since early primary school and something he acted on all the way through secondary school. He took part in a wide range of work experience in general practice, surgery, pharmacy, radiology, physiotherapy. He even applied for a job at Bathurst Hospital while waiting for his HSC results. As you can see on the next slide, his HSC results were outstanding, allowing him to achieve his long-term goal of a career in medicine. And another Western Advocate photo op. So 2004 saw Cameron embark on his medicine journey as an undergraduate involved with patients from day one. It was still hard to keep him out of the papers. I managed to find a few of the photos that the Sydney Morning Herald didn't use. <laughs> Here is the result of Cameron's first four years of university. Bachelor of Science Medicine, Honours Class 1 from the University of New South Wales in 2007. Proof that Cameron somehow managed early in his career to achieve the balance between work and life that we all search for. He married Teresa in 2009. Also, degree number two in 2009, Bachelor of Medicine and a Bachelor of Surgery, Honours Class 2. Then life got more interesting. Mind you, for someone with all the smarts in the world, we're not sure that he got the measurement right for Emily's homecoming. <laughs> but it didn't stop him from achieving degree number three, a Master of Public Health and a Master of Health Management. Cameron must get bored easily. In 2015, he added the role of Assistant Secretary of his union. In 2017, he became a counsellor with the Australian Maths Association, New South Wales Council, while he became the Clinical Superintendent of Medicine at Concord Repatriation General Hospital, as well as the Honorary Medical Officer Geriatrician for Western New South Wales Local Health District. With nothing to keep him busy in 2018, he added a few other roles, Staff Specialist Geriatrician, Acting Deputy Director, Medical Services and Acting Medical Director, National Centre for Veterans Healthcare, all based out of the Concord Repatriation General Hospital. 2019 proved to be a quiet year. Matthew was welcomed into the family. We'd be here all night if I mentioned all of Cameron's university affiliations or awards and his education supervision roles, or his professional service roles, let alone his research projects and publications. So instead, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Cameron Corb Wells, MBBS, Bachelor of Science, MPH, MHM, FRACP, the Kelso High Decade Award recipient for 2020. Well, look, thanks for that uh, rather embarrassing walk down memory lane. Um, look, thank you to the school and the organisers of today for selecting me as uh, this year's recipient of this uh, prestigious award. So there's certainly been a fair bit of work coming to this point. To be honest, it's uh, hard to believe it's now been 17 years since I was uh, in year 12, sort of in much a similar school assembly hall as we all are now. Obviously, the school's changed a lot since then. It's great to see how things have been rebuilt as the Kelso High campus. Uh, and it's actually my first time back uh, since finishing up in Year 12, 2003. So look, I'll always be incredibly grateful uh, for the experiences and opportunities my time here provided to me. 
Uh, certain, you know, though Strobe said I always wanted to do medicine from primary school, uh, I really hadn't been set on that direction uh, firmly. But as it sort of further developed as an interest over high school, it was really great to have the support and encouragement from the teachers here, as well as the broader Bathurst community to pursue that goal. Uh, Strovey, I'll certainly always be grateful for those extra tutorials to get through that uh, fourth unit of maths that year. So now, no doubt there've been uh, challenges over the years, uh, sort of including failing at several points, like bombing my first uni interview, being almost broke at a few points through uni, and obviously the uh, challenges of COVID uh, this year. But my time here certainly, I think, prepared me well uh, to understand that with perseverance and commitment, really anything is possible. So medicine was my interest, but I guess in thinking about what general advice I'd pass on to all of you today, I'd really say to just find something that interests you, uh, that you can think of as your passion, uh, embrace any opportunities that arise along the way, and don't necessarily give up when things get hard. So you certainly might not get where you want to the first time round, but there'll always be another way and other opportunities will present themselves. So best wishes to all of you, and thank you again for inviting me here today. Congratulations, Cameron. Thanks also to you, Mr Strove, for all the work in organising the Decade Award each year. Your commitment and dedication to this school, as well as its past and present students, is one that is admired by many. Congratulations once again to all award recipients, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank the teachers, administration and support staff who have contributed to the organisation that ensures the success of today's ceremony. Also, thank you to the sponsors of the special awards. Your support of this school is greatly appreciated. We would like to wish you all a safe and happy holiday and a Merry Christmas. And Mr Sloan would like to address you one last time. Well... There is one more person I need to thank before we finish today. So Cameron, thank you very much for coming today and sharing your story. And thank you to Hans for uh, the information you've provided. But Helen Burgess was a part of Kelso High when Cameron was at school. And she was a part of Kelso High well before Cameron arrived and well before possibly all of us arrive, Strabie, maybe with the exception of yourself. So 36 years, I believe, Helen, is the amount of time that you've spent at this place in its various forms with the thousands of people that you've connected with and worked with. What Helen doesn't know about Kelso High Campus, the community, the students, and the systems isn't worth knowing. And her commitment to this place as a mum, as a grandmother, as an admin officer and an admin manager is absolutely outstanding. And in a little over a week, she finishes up her time at Kelso High Campus. So Helen, on behalf of the entire community. I want to thank you for everything that you've done for Kelso High, for this community. I want to wish you all the very best in retirement and we just have a very small token of our appreciation if you'll come up and accept that from our school community. So to conclude our assembly today, we welcome back the Aboriginal dancers for a final performance. Afterwards, morning tea will be available next door in the Human Movement Studio, and can all award recipients please come up on stage for a photograph once the dance is concluded. Thank you.
So if our special guest would like to adjourn to the Human Movement Studio with all the award recipients, please come up to the stage for a group photo. Thank you. <laughs>